This is the third part within a series of lessons where I'm talking you through how we classify things. And in the last lesson, I talked you through the Linnaean classification system, which organizes all the living things on Earth across seven different levels, from the kingdom, and the kingdoms are the broadest and widest ranging groups of organisms, all the way down to the individual species. And members of the same species generally share the same DNA. In today's lesson, I'm going to talk you through the phyla of the animal kingdom, and then I'm going to pick the chordates phylum, which we belong to, and talk you through the classes that are within that phylum. I'll finish off the lesson by talking you through some of the other kingdoms as well. There are nine phyla within the animal kingdom. As you can see, there's a fair bit of information about each one on these slides. Feel free to pause it at any point and read through in more detail. Otherwise, I'm just going to skip over each one. First up on the left, we have peripherans, and these are sea sponges. They have a unique way of feeding where they suck in the water around them, they filter out all the little bits of food within that water, and then they spit it back out again. So that's why these guys are called filter feeders. In the middle, we have nadarians, and nadarians include jellyfish, sea anemones, and coral polyps. Jellyfish tend to rely on utilizing their stinging tentacles to catch their prey. On the right, we have echinoderms. And echinoderms literally means spiny skin. So this includes sea stars, brittle stars, sea urchins, and sea cucumbers. All of them live in the ocean, and all of them have spiny skin, except for sea cucumbers. There are three different types of worms within the animal kingdom. The first ones on the left are annelids. And annelids' bodies are divided into sections, and you can see the sections by looking for the rings along the length of the body. Examples include leeches and earthworms. In the middle, we have nematodes. And unlike annelids, nematodes' bodies are not divided into segments. Nematodes include a wide variety of different parasites. On the right, we have platy helmets. And you've seen the prefix platy in the word platypus, which means flat-footed. So these are flatworms because platy means flat. I recommend that you look up some videos of putty helmets because they move by rippling their body through the water and it's quite interesting to watch. Next up, we have two phyla that are generally characterized by having some sort of outer armor. On the left, we have mollusks, which are the second largest phylum within the animal kingdom, including snails, slugs, oysters, and mussels. All of them live in water or in very moist places and a lot of them have a shell like a snail. On the right, we have the largest animal phylum, arthropods, and this includes over 1 million different species, including insects, scorpions, spiders, and crustaceans. Arthropods are found everywhere, on land, in the air, and in the water, and they're characterized by having a hard outer layer called an exoskeleton. Last but not least is the chordates phylum, and this is the one that we belong to. Chordates have a nerve cord that runs down their backs, and this delivers messages from the brain to the rest of the body and from the body back up to the brain. Most of them have an internal skeleton called an endoskeleton with small pieces of bone called vertebrae protecting the spinal cord. If you do have a spine, you're called a vertebrate. If you don't have a spine, you're called an invertebrate. And the most intelligent invertebrate is the octopus. Chordates also have what we call bilateral symmetry which means that I can cut an organism down the, the length of it, and I'll have roughly even halves. Some other species have radial symmetry, which means no matter which direction I cut it in, I'll have even halves. And then other organisms and other species have no symmetry at all. But all chordates have bilateral symmetry. Chordates are further divided into eight classes based on a range of characteristics, including how they breathe, the type of skin, their body temperature, and how they reproduce. First up on the left, we have Agnatha. And Agnatha is Greek for meaning no jaw. So these are jawless parasitic fish. In the middle, we have Chondrichthys, And these are fish that have skeletons made of cartilage. They also have jaws, teeth, and fins. Examples include stingrays and sharks. And on the right, we have Osteichthys, and these are fish that have bones, as well as fins, jaws, and teeth. Examples include seahorses, 
as well as a typical fish that you would catch in a lake. Now we're moving into some classes that you're probably a bit more familiar with. On the left, we have amphibians, and these guys can live in and outside of the water. Their eggs are laid in the water, and the young have gills, like tadpoles, but then they start using their lungs. Their lungs aren't that effective, though, so they end up breathing through their skin as well. These guys are what we call ectothermic, which means that they can't regulate their own body temperature. Instead, they rely on being in the sun to warm up or being in the shade to cool down. Reptiles are also ectothermic, and these guys have dry, scaly skin. They breathe using their lungs and mostly live on land. Some lay eggs, and these eggs can be hard-shelled, like crocodile eggs, or they can have soft shells, like turtle eggs. And some reptiles even give birth to live young. On the right, we have aves. And the word aves sounds like the word aviary, which is a cage for birds. They have feathers, and they lay hard-shelled eggs. Aves have wings, but of course we know with the penguin, not all aves can fly. Aves are endothermic, which means they can regulate their own body temperature and they don't have to rely on the temperature of their surroundings. And of course we have mammals. Some key characteristics of mammals are that they have hair, they feed their babies on milk, they're endothermic, which means they can regulate their own body temperature, and there's other characteristics as well, like their hearts having four chambers, and all mammals have sweat glands. There are three types or subclasses of mammals. Placentals are mammals where the baby finishes developing inside the mother, and then the baby is born at a fairly developed stage. Examples include seals, dingoes, horses, humans, humpback whales, and flying foxes. Monotremes are mammals that lay eggs. Examples include the platypus, and two species of echidna. And marsupials are mammals that give birth to tiny undeveloped young that climb into a pouch where they feed on milk and finish developing inside that pouch. Examples include wombats, koalas and kangaroos. And in fact, most of the world's marsupials live in Australia. So we've been looking at how we classify animals in the animal kingdom. We look at a huge range of features, including the type of skin, their skeletal structure, how they breathe, and how they reproduce. And there's a whole range of other features. And so now you might be wondering, how do we classify things that are in other kingdoms? In the plant kingdom, like with animals, we look for key observable characteristics. And some of the main overarching ways that we can separate plants into different groups are how they reproduce, and also whether they have organized internal transport systems. An example here are the four main phyla of the plant kingdom, and the main distinction between them is how they reproduce. Anthophyta reproduce via flowers. Coniferophyta reproduce through cones and needles. Ferns reproduce through spreading spores. And mosses also produce spores, but their spores are mainly spread through water. Let's go through a summary of today's lesson. There are nine phyla of the animal kingdom. Peripherans. Nadarians, echinoderms, three types of worms, annelids, nematodes, and platyhelminths, mollusks, arthropods, and chordates. There are eight classes of the chordate phylum, including different types of fish, amphibians, reptiles, aves, and mammals. There are three subclasses of mammals, including placentals, monotremes, and marsupials. A main way that plants can be classified is based on how they reproduce.